I watched this Chael Sonnen video, and uh, it was really interesting for a, a variety of reasons that I mentioned yesterday. And in it, Chael Sonnen says, this whole thing got hooked up by Jamie Varner. I said, man, we got to check in with him. So he joins us now on the hotline, the former WEC lightweight champion himself. Hi, Jamie. How are you? Hey, Luke. Long time no talk. How's it going, buddy? It is going quite well, Jamie. First of all, let's catch up a little bit, man. Are you still in Arizona? Like, where are you these days? Yeah, I um, I just moved back to Arizona. Um, it's been kind of a crazy time since I retired from fighting um, in 2014. I... Uh, I owned a gym. I uh, had that in Scottsdale, Arizona. Started in 2013. Um, I was able to negotiate a deal to where I got acquired, made some money, went back to college to finish my degree because I dropped out my senior year to go fight in the UFC. Went back, finished my degree, and I started working, uh, doing medical sales and for a Fortune 500 company, uh, Boston Scientific. They moved me out to Atlanta. I was living out in Atlanta, working out there, and then got connected with bioaccelerator and they just made me an offer i couldn't refuse so now i'm now i'm in the corporate world went from fighting guys in the octagon to now fighting guys in the in the office that is kind of crazy man well first of all congratulations on your degree what was your um what was your major uh marketing with a minor in finance Man, that's great. That's a great story. Good for you, Jamie. I'm really glad to hear that. All right, so BioAccelerator, what do you do for them, and what is it that they do? So I they, they hired me on. I'm their uh, national marketing director, and the company is a stem cell regenerative medicine company. They, uh, we have a, we're based in Phoenix, Arizona. That's where our corporate office is, but our clinic is in Medellin, Colombia. And we have the top scientists, um, our medical director is actually, her name is Dr. Carolyn Halpert. She was uh, trained and got her medical degree from Wake Forest University, which they are the leaders in, in the country as far as stem cell research and regenerative medicine. So he, she graduated from there, moved to Columbia, and she's our medical director heading up all this, the stem cell science and research that we have going on, as well as we have a bunch of PhDs um and that just they do incredible work uh with the stem cells now interestingly to note i've been to columbia a bunch of times i have family there i've never been to medellin how did you guys how did the business end up there and why columbia of all places great question um columbia so columbia is ranked number three in the world for medical advancements and just overall medicine uh, where the U.S. is ranked number five, so it's they got they have a great medical system there. In in Medellin, they have like 32 different universities. It's a hotbed for medical, just medical advancements, just with all with all the stuff going on there, as well as we can't this type of therapy that we are doing we is not legal yet in the U.S. So we are actually able we created partnerships with hospitals where. We will buy, essentially buy umbilical cords from, and we, they have, the, the patients have to go through a rigorous testing but to make sure that they're disease free and all stuff. But we'll buy umbilical cords. We will cut it in half. We take half of it and we use that to, to extract uh, mesenchymal stem cells from the wart and jelly. And then we actually cryogenically freeze the other half of the uh, umbilical cord for the patient. So we, we have these built-in strategic partnerships in Medellin where we can, we can get these umbilical cords, extract the stem cells, and then what we can do in our lab is we can actually incubate them and grow the stem cells by, like, doubling them every 24 hours. So I can extract, let's say, a half a million stem cells from the wart and jelly from the umbilical cord, but we can actually grow them and cultivate them and double them every 24 hours in our lab. So that's something that we can do in Colombia that we can't do here in the U.S. Fair enough. Jamie Varner joins us here on the Luke Thomas Show. So, uh, Chael talked about the thing he got, which was this um, general, uh, I don't know, he said there was nothing wrong. Like, he said he didn't have a shoulder issue, he didn't have a back issue. He just wanted to go and get some kind of, what would you call what he got? I don't, I don't know what the name for that is. Yeah, he got our rejuvenation package, um, which is kind of weird. He's the first fighter I've ever met, talked to, that doesn't have an issue. 
Um, my career didn't last near as long as his, but I torn both my rotator cuffs, tore my MCL, broke my ankle. I've had multiple concussions, broke my hand four times. Uh, Donald Cerrone was the first time, and then Joe Lozon. So it's I, I've been riddled with injuries. And so it was really crazy to hear about him not having those those types of injuries. But, yeah, he just got a rejuvenation package, so it was, it was just an IV infusion. Um, they injected him with a total of 50 million stem cells. And it just it goes around the whole body. Wherever there's inflammation, the, the stem cells get attracted to that. The body has a u- very unique way of whenever there's, like, a problem, there's an issue going on, your body almost sends up, like, signal-like flares to uh, – attract the stem cells and all the healing parts of your body to go and like actually heal that area that's you know damaged interesting okay but let's say you did have a bum shoulder or what i mean it sounds like you have um benefited from some of these therapies yes and if so what did they do for you for me i'm actually i'm going out next month i my issues are a little bit more um concerning a little bit more um invasive I've had, and this is this has been public knowledge. I've had tons of concussions. Most of them from training. I've only been knocked out in one fight. Then I knocked myself out in my last fight. But um, I suffered from several concussions. So, what I need a specialist, and we have we have a specialist. I'm going down next month. I'm going to have 100 million stem cells directly injected into my spine to kind of help me with some of the issues that I've had from all my concussions to try and do more preventative maintenance to try and prevent like CTE, um, early onset dementia, Alzheimer's, that type of stuff. So um, I haven't undergone the therapy yet. I'm scheduled to go in December to get that done, though. Crazy. How optimistic are you? Like, what, what are they telling you is possible? Well, if so I'll, I'll just share a story. How when I first got on with the company, they, they actually sent me down to Columbia. So... It, we have like a revolving door of doctors coming in and they'll pay anywhere from five to $10,000 to have our staff train them on our protocol so they can use it in, in their own clinics. So that's, that's something that, that we have ongoing, but I went down there a month and a half ago and we had about 20 physicians down there all trained on our different poto- protocols. One day was in like a classroom type setting or sorry, half a day in a classroom type setting. Then the next day and a half, we're actually dealing with patients and, at, and working on patients. And one of the patients that we had was a, a patient, a patient with Parkinson's. And so if you've ever seen Parkinson's tremors, um, it's like a constant like jerky motion with the, like the right arm or whatever. They have the, the little tremors yep. and we curled this patient up into a ball. We had our uh, we had our neuro neurologist come in, neurosurgeon come in, and he placed a, like a spinal tap on this patient, and they injected this patient with a hundred million stem cells. And within like five or six minutes, you could see the tremors were nowhere near as violent as they were before it. But with the magic, the magic of this story is five days later. He was in the lobby doing his, post, uh, his post-procedure follow-up. He, the guy was sitting in the lobby reading the newspaper. Huh. Reading the newspaper. So if you have Parkinson's and your arm is constantly, you can't read a newspaper. And this guy was sitting in there, and it brought a tear to my eye, and I knew that I wanted to be a part of this. So the company has actually found doctors that head up a clinical trial with me for my concussions and to try to monitor me. So that's what's taken so long. That is a crazy story. Jamie Varner joins us here on the Luke Thomas Show. So, Jamie, can I ask how your health is? Now, not so much the broken hand, which I can imagine is, I don't know, could be arthritic or painful. Uh, And you have been open talking about your concussions. It sounds like you're doing great going back to college. You've got a nice, awesome job, it sounds like. Not really in terms of what the financial reward might be, but what you can do for other people. How is your health, though? Overall, I would say my health is great. Uh, I mean, I, w- I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't change anything, Luke. To be honest with you, I wouldn't change anything. I'm gonna have bumps and bruises. I knew exactly what I was getting myself into uh, with fighting, and the reason why I, I got out when I did one, you know, I was on a bit of a on a bit of a skid trying to manage and run a business as well as trying to be a professional athlete. That was a huge mistake that I made. But once I started getting the concussions, I've seen what 
what Chuck Liddell and some of the other guys that kind of, I felt like held on to it too long, what was happening to them. I didn't want to be that guy. Of course, I would love to go out on top. I would love to have gone out on a win. But no matter what, that fight with Drew Dober, I was retiring. I got a concussion about six days before that fight. But overall, my health has been much better. I, I coach high school wrestling at Notre Dame Prep. I'm the head wrestling coach. I'm, I'm working with Bio Accelerator. I'm able to make a positive impact and change lives. And it's, I, I've, I've opened up a whole new arena. Like my goal was originally when I was 18 years old, I wanted to fight in the UFC. At 21 years old, I was fighting in the UFC. I wanted to become a world champion. At 23 years old, I became a world champion. I mean, I, I've done everything I really wanted to do in the sport. Obviously, I wish I would have gotten the, the UFC gold, but the WEC gold, If every, anybody that remembers the WEC, we were the best lightweights in the world, undoubtedly. Because as soon as they brought us over, Benson Henderson went on and beat Frankie Edgar, won a world title, and then at who, beat, uh, who beat Benson Henderson? Another WEC guy. So um, I feel very confident, and I'm proud of my career. But overall, health is great. I just love this new arena. With I have new like corporate goals that I'm trying to like achieve. Jimmy Varner joins us here on the Luke Thomas Show. So, Jimmy, let's get back to the the science. Now, I'm not a scientist, and, and I suppose you you aren't either. But you know more about this than I do. How advanced is the science, which is to say, it sounds like what they already have can do wonders, but do they even know what they can do with this stuff to its maximum potential yet? We are the industry leaders in the world as of right now for what we do. There is no better company with a, with a better base of scientists and physicians with knowledge in stem cells and the application and how to treatment, how to treat the patients for all their different ailments. And with our protocols, we are the industry leaders. Um, the, the team is absolutely incredible. And the, the way that Columbia, everybody like has this misconception about Columbia. Um, they, they're thinking like Pablo Escobar, you know, and they watch Narcos and they think that's how it is. It's, they are long past that. Again, they're number three in the world for, med- for medical treatment and medical, medical advancements. Number three, where the U.S. is number five. And in order to get into our lab, I, I couldn't walk into our lab. You have to be a biochemical engineer. You have to have an, a, a postgraduate degree to even go into our lab, and it has to be a, you have to have that specific type degree to even walk in there. So I'm not even allowing our lab. Our CEO isn't allowing our app, our lab. Our COO isn't allowing our lab. Only the people with those with that degree can get into our lab. It's it's absolutely amazing. Like I mean, you you heard Chell's podcast. Hmm. It's like Fort Knox. It is unbelievable. That is kind of crazy, which is so weird about Columbia, too. I said I've been there a bunch of times. I actually spent all of my vacation days there last year. It's a very Catholic religious country. I'm surprised that they have um, legal leeway to allow for that kind of thing, and the United States doesn't. That That, that, that is surprising, Jamie. Well, the reason why, and this is probably the big issue was the fetal stem cells. Not the umbilical, not the uh, the Wharton jelly that you can get stem cells from adipose fat. You can get stem cells from bone marrow. You can even get stem cells from your teeth. It was back then the big issue where all the all the, the religious people were up in arms was the fetal stem cells. People sticking a, sticking a needle through a pregnant woman's belly and going into a baby fetus and extracting those stem cells. That was the issue. Huh. The, the mesenchymal cells that come from Wharton jelly or the adipose cells that you get from the fat or the bone marrow cells, those aren't really a big issue. It was the, it was the fetal. Um, those, were the big, those were the big ones, the embryonic stem cells. Got it. Okay, that makes more sense. Now, in terms of what this means for MMA, you know, Chael is a successful guy in a number of fronts, and I don't know how rich he is, but I would say it's probably safe to assume he is financially comfortable, so he can probably afford to take a five or six hour flight to Medellin, have all this pr- procedure done, even if it's the rejuvenating, which sounds like not very one of it, not not one of its more serious. Um, uh, packages that you could possibly sell. I guess my question is, how affordable is this, and how often before other MMA fighters start taking trips down to Latin America? You know what? I don't know. Um, I don't know how long until these, these fighters start coming down, uh, just because, as you know, 
there are very few fighters that are affluent enough to really like to thrive. You know, it, it, you start in the UFC. I think now the contracts are ten thousand to show, ten thousand to win. When I started fighting, it was three thousand to show, three thousand to win. I fought, Oof. I fought Hermes Franco, who was top five in the world for three thousand dollars. Wow! But it's come a long way. But um, for Chael's treatment specifically, Chael's treatment was eight thousand dollars. He received fifty million stem cells, and he had them intravenously um, delivered. So that was that's like kind of the price expectation for his same type of treatment. And that does not include airfare, hotel costs. Airfare is anywhere from $1,000, uh, $600 to $1,000, depending on where you are in the country, um, as well. And then hotels down there, as you know, are pretty cheap. You can get a nice hotel yep. for 30 to $50 a night. Um, or we have a medical – we call it a medical compound – and Chael did a good, great job of describing it. We have we have a hotel connected to a giant mall that has over a hundred stores, twenty restaurants, two gyms, an amusement park for kids, and then our medical tower is connected. So you really don't ever have to leave. But Medellin is is beautiful, and, and you never you said you never been there. It's absolutely beautiful, yeah. and the the people are so friendly. The the only issue is it's not as high tourism. There's not it's like not a, a, such a great tourism destination. So not a lot of the locals speak a ton of English. Right. But where we are in our compound, pretty much everybody speaks English. Yeah, that's so been my from experience. The, from the, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jamie. I was like, uh, from the hotel staff to the people in the mall to the medical tower, everybody is either bilingual or trilingual. Yeah, that, that's been, if I can be frank, that's my experience in Colombia generally. Like, I've been to Bogota a million times. English is not prevalent there. In Cartagena on the coast, you get a little, it's, more, it's way more tourist ready, so it's better there. But even then, it's not, it's not like going to Spain, where everybody no. speaks English. It's not like that at all. All right, so, Jimmy, are you guys waiting for USADA to crack down on this? Like, I mean, so far, they don't seem to care, but maybe they will eventually. What, what do you make of what's going to happen next? I don't, I don't know how USADA could even test for something like this because all it's doing is promoting your body to naturally heal itself. So I, I don't understand how – I don't know how USADA could get involved in this. It's really not a, an unfair advantage. Um, I mean, it, it's, I, you're, it's, it's helping promote your body to heal itself. So I guess if the people that can afford it, it does create some of a, somewhat of an unfair advantage – because the recovery time uh, from, like, a normal injury is cut down drastically um, by, le I would say, at least 50% from what our studies have shown. I can't go and say this will cut recovery down by 50%, but off the studies that we've seen, we've been able to cut recovery time by at least half. These, these cells don't just die immediately. They will stay active in your system from anywhere from nine months to a year. So you get these injections, like um, Chael Sonnen will still be feeling the effects and the positive benefits from this eight, nine, ten months down the road. Amazing. Uh, before we let you go, Jamie, it's it's amazing you're talking. You bring about you uh, talking about all the old hits, fighting Hermes, Franca, and all that good stuff. Can you believe that Chuck and Tito were fighting over Thanksgiving? <laughs> oh my God. I love Chuck. I love Tito. Um, I've had the pleasure of hanging out with both of them and meeting both of them. But I, I saw the video of Chuck hitting pads. I just I don't think it's going to be a good night for Chuck. It's crazy. I think uh, Tito's done a good job of ha having, like, continuing his career and having the resurgence, beating some tough guys. I, I think Chuck, he, I think this is just a money grab for Chuck. He, I don't think he has any shot winning this fight. Hmm. Interesting. Um, all right, Jamie. Well, it's good to catch up with you. I'm sure we're going to hear more of this. Congratulations on all your success, and thank you for giving us this uh, really helpful information, man. We appreciate it. No problem. And anybody, they can go to bioaccelerator.com. They can see some of the testimonials, see, see what we're doing. And if any of your listeners have questions, I'm pretty good on, with social media. Hit me up, and, and I'll respond. I'll get you some information. Cool, and we'll share your Twitter account at MMA on SiriusXM so folks can get it there. All good uh, to you, Jamie. Thank you so much. 
No problem, Luke. Look forward to hearing back from you, buddy. Yes, sir. There he goes. Wow. What a cool story, man. What a great guy as well. We really appreciate Thank his time. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel. There's other videos you can watch right here. If you've never heard my Sirius XM radio show, there's a link in the description box below. You can try it for free for 30 days. The Luke Thomas Show airs weekdays, 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Fight Nation, channel 93. Catch y'all next time.